Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today I'm going to show you some uh, reporting that we do in SAS. I'm going to show you with the uh, standard uh, available data they have in SAS for you to work with and learn from. And so this is stock data that they have that's from like uh, December of 1990 or something to December of 2005. And this is the actual data. You can go into the uh, servers and find the tables for it. It's called stock. And uh, so if I go into the servers, here it is right there, stocks, actually, not stock. It's called stocks. And when you click on it, this is what you'll find. You'll see stock, a column of stock, date, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted close. So what we're going to do is make it so I want to be able to run a report that filters by two different prompt variables. So what that means is, or one's going to be a range, one's going to be a definite. So what I want to do is I want in the end a report where I can filter by the company name, or in this case stock, and then I also want to be able to filter by the date. So I want them both in there. So I want a date range and I want a particular stock, so if I'm IBM or Microsoft or whatever it is, because there's you know numerous different stocks in here. There's Microsoft and there's other ones. So I want to be able to filter by that. And you can take these ideas and use them with any data that you have that's available to you in your SAS environment. So what I'm going to do is I would first build the query. So we go up to tasks and put data and query builder, right? I've already built it, so it's right here. But what I first want to do before I do that is I want to have those two prompts, right? So I go to my prompt manager, and I have them both built here, and I'm going to bring them both up for you. So I have the company name. And that's this one here. So you're going to have two parts, right? The general, which is the name and description of what it is, and whether or not you require a non-blank value. I want that. And then, so once I've done that, I go to the next screen, which is or the tab, which is prompt type and values. So in this case, this is a company name. So I want it to be text, and I want it to be a single value. I could have in a range or in a list, and that would be fine. In this case, I'm just doing one. So in this case, I've got a single value. I could pick multiple values if I wanted to, and then when I build it inside the query builder, I'd pick in a list. But in this case, I'm just sticking with a single value. I just want IBM, or I just want Microsoft, or whatever it is, Apple computers, whatever. And so then I hit OK. So I'm done with that. I'll have that built. Then I have to do the dates. So let's click on that. Let's bring that up, and let me show you. Same thing, you would hit add here to do these. These are already built, so you don't, I don't have to do that. But if I wanted to, so prompt manager is this right here. And then I just hit add or edit for these. So let's bring this up. I'm basically editing it. Same thing as you would see if you were building it. I just change it to name of dates. This is date range, so we'll say that. Filter. Okay, and same thing requires non-blank value. Then we just go here to this one, and this is where it's different. Instead of text, I want date range. This is your choice here. Okay, it could be any of these that I pick. I could pick date, date range, time, time range. I'm going to pick a date range. And once I pick that, uh, we just want to make sure we have the custom variable available to us, which is right here. Okay, so we just have custom, and then it's got your date prompts right here. So you're good to go. Then you hit OK. It'll save it. Next, what we want to do is you want to build the query builder. So you would hit tasks, data, and query builder. Since I already built it, let's just right-click on it and hit modify. This is the same screen you would get when if you clicked to create one. The only difference is is that the select data I've already taken all these fields from our one table here and put them right here. Now I can have multiple tables if I did I would have them all listed here and to see them all I would just have to change this plus sign right here to make it so that I can see them all and I could bring them all in here. This is just one table that's all it is. I'm not joining it to another table so this is the fields. Now to get the props that we made earlier in the filter data, what I'll do is I'll bring over stock, that's this one here, and I'll bring over date, which is this one here. Okay, you just bring, you just pick it and drag it just like you do for select data. Same thing, it's the same as you do for sort data. I could put an open in here, and I could click it and bring it over. I don't need that one there, so I don't want that. But in this case, what we do is we bring them over, and I can click on this, and this is exactly what you'll see. You will see, okay, do I want it equal to? So this is for the stock one. Do I want it in a list? Remember I was telling you that earlier, so you could have it in a list. That If I want it in a list, I have to go back to the prompt for the uh, manager for the company. I have to edit that and make it so that it's more than one, multiple values. In this case, I just have one. So it's equal to, and I want to have this. So this is what you'll see when you come in here. I want to have this selected, generate filter for a prompt value. 
I want to click on this arrow right here. I want to click on prompts and I want to click on my prompt, which in this case would be and company. See that? So that brings that in. And then I hit next. And this is the actual summary of it and the uh, code for it. Then we hit finish. And if there's a problem, you'll see a pop up right here that says that the values are not in a range or the values do not agree with the format and so on. They'll tell you what to do. Uh, so the same thing here with this one. So this is the date, so let's click on that. Brings us up. Now see how this says it says in a range? That's because we have it set for in a range. So we want we want this. We would go here. I, I mean I already have it selected, but you would go here, again prompts, you would put and dates, you would put it in, you put next, and make sure when you're there that you have this is check and it will be. Okay. Next, here's the code for it. You hit finish, it puts it in here. Make sure that says and. You could put or if you decided you want to do that. In this case, we want it to be both the company name that we select and within the range that we select. So we're good here. We want that. Then your sort data, we can decide. So in this case, I've got the sending. I just brought over date, put it here. Then I just clicked this and made it so it's descending. By default, it'll be ascending. I want it by to have the latest date to, be, uh, to show first. That's what descending will do. Then what I would do is hit save and close, and that'll get that'll remove the results that we had, okay? And then I'm not gonna do it now, but and then you would just run it. Now by doing no, it created a second one. I don't need that, so I can delete that one. But regardless, what you'll do is when you see it run, you can go here, go to your process flow, and it'll be right here, and this will go green until it's completed and then it'll show you your results. So if I go here and I go to my query builder, I now have this output data field and I have a log in my code. Now, if it didn't run, it didn't complete, you won't see this. Or if it ran and gave you zero uh, lines back, you wouldn't see that. You would just see, you would have this, but then you would just have the top row and you would not have any uh, numbers here. So this is my output with that, where I ran it for just IBM, and I ran it for this date range. And you can see that in my code. Let's go here. This is what you saw earlier. That's the actual code. And the log file will actually give the actual. So, so the code will give you the fields and the prompt values. But it won't tell you exactly what you entered in. So in this case, this shows you right here what I entered in. IBM. See it right there? That was what I picked. And then I picked the date range of from 01 to 0, of 01 of June of 2005 to the 31st of December 2005. So when you first looked at this data, basically what I did was I looked at this and I said, I know that I have data from 01 June 05 right here on up to this. So that's a return. So we should have seven rows of data, right? So go back here. And what do we have? Seven rows of data because that's an order. Now, if that wasn't an order back there in the input data, then by date, then we would, you know, we could have more uh, rows returned. But that's basically what it is. So this is a quick way to, I just showed you how to create the prompts, right? We did the prompt manager, we created the prompts, and I could have created different prompts. I could have picked, you know, volume or one of the other fields here to uh, prompt or to filter by. So we've got two prompts, right? We have company and dates. And we ran that against the stock data set, and, or stock table, stocks table, and we filtered it down. So now we have seven rows. We have it filtered by the stock and the, uh, the date range. So you could do this again. As I said, you could have made this in a list, and I showed you how we could, where we could change that. When you go to this, you can modify the query builder, and you could say in the filter data, we could change this guy to be in a list instead of equal to. And then if we did that, we would have to go back to our prompt manager, remember, and go back to the one which is company. And we would have to go in here. And remember, we were in here in the prompt type. We have to go to this where it's a single value, and we would have to make it multiple values. Okay? That's all we would have to do if we wanted to make it so I could have, like, I could filter by IBM, Microsoft, and Apple, or I could filter by whatever I want. Okay? That's how it works. And uh, it's a great way. SAS is really neat that it's so quick and easy to pull back your data and manipulate your data, filter it, and do some cool things. We'll show you more stuff here in the future. Basically, this one, I just wanted to show you mainly how to pull back your data and how to use prompts to filter your data 
and sort it and stuff like that. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please like and subscribe down below. And also be sure and click that bell so you'll get notified every time that I put out a great video like this. Um, and also be sure and leave me a comment. I would like to hear from you and know what you think, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Thanks again. I hope you found this helpful and have a great day.